All right, so we've all had those days when we wake up, we walk over to the harp to practice, and we realize, oh, a string is broken. It's probably the most important string for the piece you're playing as well, and so you have to spend some time to switch the string out. Today I'm gonna to go through the process of changing a string on the pedal harp. This is also gonna be applicable to lever harps. There's one point in the process where there'll be a few small differences, but I'll point that out when I get to it. So I've broken down the process of changing a string into seven steps. Step number one is figuring out which string broke. Step number two is tying the end knot so that the string won't slip up through the soundboard. Step number three is figuring out what type of anchor you'll need for the string, if you even need an anchor at all. Step number four is inserting the anchor into the end knot that you've tied. Step number five is positioning the string so that it's on the harp, ready to go. Step number six is tightening the string so that everything is locked in place and so that nothing is gonna move around after you finish tightening the string. And then the last step, step seven, is tuning the string, which you're gonna to have to do a lot of when it's a new string. You really have to tune it very regularly for the first maybe two to three days so that it starts holding pitch. So for each one of these seven steps, I'm gonna provide a time code down in the description. So if you're following along, changing strings on your harp, you can just click on whichever time code you want for whichever step you want, and then watch that over and over so that you're making sure that you're doing it correctly. All right, now let's jump into this process and change some strings. Before we start changing our thing, we have to quickly just check and make sure that we have everything we need in order to change the string. So the first thing we'll need, obviously, is the string itself. The second thing that we'll need is our standard tuning key that we use to tune our harp. Then we'll need some form of wire cutters. Now, I took these from my dad's toolkit back when I was a young harpist, and I've been using them ever since. So, sorry dad, guess they're mine now. And the final thing you'll need is some form of anchor that can anchor the string in the harp so it doesn't slip through the soundboard. So in this case, a small piece of rounded wood, or perhaps a little piece of large gut string that has been cut up you can use your wire cutters to cut up an old gut string once it sounds bad or when it breaks. All right, so step number one is figuring out which string broke on your harp. We label strings with two pieces of information. One, the note that broke, so like F or G or A, and then the second piece of information is which octave. And so that's what we're gonna have to figure out. So the octave is denoted by a number somewhere between zero and seven. If you're playing on a lever harp, you might not even need some of these strings, specifically the ones in the zero octave or in the seventh octave. The way that we count the strings on our harp to know which octave the string is in is by counting up from F. So the top F on the harp up to the top G, those two top strings, they're gonna be labeled as octave zero. And then the F to the E directly below those strings that's gonna be octave one. And then octave two, three, four, five, six, and seven from there. So step number two is tying the end knot. And to do that, we'll need our string. And first I wanna actually condition this string because it is a gut string. So I wanna condition it so that it's not gonna crack. The internal fibers inside of a gut string can kind of crack if you bend the string too sharply. If you do that, it'll actually weaken the string and make it break more easily. To condition the string, I'm just going to take it out of the package. And then I'm going to unfurl the string. So now that I have my string out of the package, I'll choose the end that I want to tie the end knot on. It doesn't actually matter which end you choose to tie the end knot in, so I can just choose one of the ends of the string arbitrarily. And then from here what I want to do is kind of massage the string gently so that I'm making it so that this, this one specific end of the string can bend more easily. You'll notice that the string starts out very stiff. So now at this point, once I've made this end of the string able to bend a little bit more easily, I'm going to start tying my knot. In order to make my knot, I'm going to make a first loop. So I'm going to 
pass the long end of my string over top of the short end of the string, like this. And because this string is very thick, it has, sort of has a life of its own. So what I want to do now is compress this loop so that it will stay where I want it to stay. So it doesn't need to be too long. So now I've made the loop much smaller. And here, if I squeeze this loop, you'll notice that the string turns white right at the point where it bends. This is what I was mentioning earlier when the string is damaged. So now you can see that the string turned white just at the tip of that bend. So that's the internal fibers of the string cracking. This is why we massage the string so that this doesn't happen all along the string as we tie the end knot. To make the next portion of this, so I have my long end passing over top of my short end. Now what I want to do is create another loop. So I'm going to create this loop by having the long end pass over top of the portion of string that is connecting to this loop. So like this. Again, long end is on top. And now at this point, I'm going to turn this like this and put it over top of the first loop I created. So on top and over top like this. It's called a half hitch if you want specific knot terminology. And now we're going to tighten that down around our initial loop. And now I have my end knot. Moving on to the third step, we have to choose an anchor for the string. If you're tying with some of the lowest gut strings on the harp, the fifth octave gut strings, they typically don't need an anchor because just tying the end knot that we've already tied is enough to keep the string rooted and anchored in the harp so that it doesn't slip up through the little eyelet in the soundboard. However, if you're tying on a smaller string, it's really good to insert an anchor so that the string never comes up through the eyelet. I personally prefer small pieces of gut string for my anchors. I don't have to buy them. They're very small, inexpensive, and I'm reusing materials. I really like that. But you can use small wooden anchors if you'd like. I see these a lot on Kamak lever harps, uh, but they can be harder to find. So if you accidentally lose the anchor from the previous string, you may not have one of these available. So I personally am going to be using a small piece of gut string. So step number four is to insert the anchor into the knot that we've created. Now you can see that here there is the first loop that we created and then a little loop that is going around that loop. And you can see that there's this one spot that's much more open. So that is the spot that I want to place my anchor through. At this point, you can tighten the end knot down as much as possible so that the anchor won't slip out. That's actually going to be very hard with the size of string that I have. It just doesn't want to tighten anymore. So I'm going to have to probably place the anchor in this knot when it's inside of the harp and then allow the tuning process to tighten it down around the anchor. But if you have a smaller string, you'll have no problem tightening it down so that it stays in place. All right, so the fifth part of the process is to insert the string into the position we want it to be in for tightening the string and tuning the string. So to do this, I'm going to insert the string through the soundboard of the harp, grabbing it on the other side and pulling it all the way through. Just be careful at this step that the anchor doesn't fall out of your string. If it does, just put the anchor back inside of the end knot once it's inside of the harp already. Then you want to make sure that the tuning peg at the top of the harp is oriented the correct way. So we want the little hole to be facing down and up, not side to side. So you can just do that with a tuning pin, just adjust it so that it's in the right position. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our string and we're going to put it through that little hole. Once we've got our string through that hole, the last thing to do is just pull all the slack out of the string so that it's taut. So now that our string is through the tuning peg, we want to make sure that there's enough slack in the string so that it will get enough turns around the tuning peg when we start to tighten it. 
So in order to do that, I like to check the string to see if it has at least a fifth of slack in it. So if I pull the string, which is an A, up to the E, then I can see, okay, this string has a fifth of slack in it. Sometimes it's nice to even leave a little bit extra and pull it all the way up to the next octave. So from A to A. And then at this point, I want to make sure that the string is placed correctly. So I want to make sure my pedal is in flat position and then place the string between the two discs and over top in the little groove on this anchor point here. So look at all the other strings and how they're set up. They give you a great reference point as to how the string is actually supposed to be set up at this point in the process. Now that the string is in position through the mechanism, and through the tuning peg. What we want to do is we want to tighten the string now so that the string goes into tune. In order to do that, I want to make sure that as I tighten the string, it wraps towards the hot harp. We don't want it wrapping out or it'll fall off this peg and then the string will just not be on the harp anymore. So I want to make sure that as I turn my tuning peg, it wraps the correct direction. So here, I don't want it to wrap on the outside. I want to make sure that it's wrapping on the inside. And at a point like this, I like to check the tuning and see if the string is getting in tune or if it's still quite out of tune. fifth of slack that we left in the string allows it to wrap around this tuning peg several times. So that gives you a lot of play. Um, you, if it doesn't wrap around this tuning peg very many times, it can actually slip off the harp because there's no friction holding it on the harp anymore. Or if you untune it a little bit, it might actually come loose and undone. So you want to make sure that you get at least two to three full wraps here so that the string is anchored in place correctly. Final part of the process with restringing one of the strings on the harp is to tune the string. You're gonna to have to tune the string a lot. Now there's a specific tip that I have here to reduce the amount of times you're gonna to need to tune the harp, but this is also gonna wear the string out a little bit faster or make it slightly more likely to break. So my tip is if you take the string, you can actually kind of move it very vigorously back and forth which is gonna simulate the string being played very many times. So if I wiggle it like this, and then check the tuning, it's gonna be very out of tune. Okay, now that it's back in tune, I can do that again. So I'll wiggle the string. And now, let's see how, how the tuning is. Tune, not that bad. I'm going to move it a lot more this time. Really making big motions with the string. All the way down to the soundboard and all the way back up. So this string is one of the larger gut strings on the instrument and it's already staying in tune pretty well after I've done this three times. This is a great method when you want to change a string really quickly and you have to play a show or it's intermission and a string has broken and you're repairing it for the second half of the concert. I would do this maybe 10 times to make sure that the string's tuning is going to stay as well as possible and then quietly check and see if I can retune the string during the performance if there are rests or I have a moment where everyone else is playing but I'm not playing and I can just quietly check and then adjust the tuning a little bit. So I really hope this video on changing strings for your harp has been helpful. If you liked it, press the thumbs up button. And if you want to see more content that I'm creating for the harp, consider subscribing. I'm going to be producing some educational videos as well as performance videos. So thanks for watching. See you next time.